here in Cannes, it's not all about that golden palm. The sidebar sections also offer a wealth of cinematic treasures, including more independent films. The director's fortnight aims to give lesser-heard voices a platform screening films from around the world. One of them is Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir Part 2. She's back with a follow-up to her deeply personal film about her early adult years in London. Honor Swinton Byrne, Tilda Swinton's daughter, plays Joanna's younger self, and we're off to find out more. Joanna Hogg, Anna Swinton Byrne, hello, thank you so much for being with us today. Joanna, your film, The Souvenir Part 2, is screening in the director's fortnight here at Cannes. And this is an autobiographical, semi-autobiographical piece that revisits uh, chapters of your life as a young film student and a young woman, so it's both professional and personal. And many of the events happened about 30, 35 years ago. And I wondered what that distance gave you in terms of your view on it. Uh, well, it gave me uh, a perspective that I couldn't have had, obviously, at the time. Um, it, 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 it gave me time to think about the story because I had seen it as a story almost when it was actually happening to me. It was a story because it felt so unreal. Um, but it took that much time to unravel my feelings around it but not gain a full understanding of it. I still don't understand exactly who this man was that I had a relationship with and, and, and who, yes, the, the uh, Anthony in the, in the souvenir was exactly, it still remains a mystery. But I, I, I realized uh, as time went on that, I, that it didn't matter that I didn't know this man, who, who, who he was, what he did, and, and, uh, and that the important thing was to try and uh, embody in some way what, what I felt through, through the process of this relationship. Don't lie, Anthony. If you don't want to know, I do then want don't to know. ask. Stop torturing yourself. I'm not Stop inviting me to torture you. It was so long ago. Um, uh, I, you know, I wondered how I would be able to depict that very particular time um, in the 80s, where everything. So, well, practically everything is different now, and, and you know, no mobile, mobile phones, um, editing on a steam bag. Um, all the objects, uh, uh, well, a lot of the objects in the film were ones that I kept over the years. Even some of the clothes that Julie wears were, were clothes, particularly at the beginning of part one, those Vivian Westwood clothes were mine that I kept. I didn't know, know why I kept those things. I'm a bit of a hoarder, but obviously uh, they, I find more and more they come in useful when we're um, making a film and finding props. And Honor, you play the character, Julie, at the centre of this film, and she's someone who's more happier behind a camera, observing, not being the centre of attention. And I believe that's not unlike yourself, because before filming The Souvenir Part 1, you weren't planning on being an actress, were you? No, not at all. And I'm much more comfortable behind a camera still. I sort of really like watching, observing, cheering other people on and sort of being part of that team and... Um, yeah, so it was interesting being in front of the camera, sort of like watching myself now. I'm like, oh God, I stuffed my teeth. But it's, um, yeah, it's it's an amazing thing. I feel as though I want to not not live my whole life in this very privileged um, part of the world I come from. I want to be really aware about what's going on around me. Sorry, sorry. We can all be sincere, but um, what's it all for? And the first uh, scene we shot, the first film, is the first scene you see in the film. So it's completely, we shot chronologically. chronologically. And um, yeah, it was really interesting. The first bit is, do you, you know, I look through a camera. And it's, I remember the first day I stepped on set and I was like, my God, I'm actually going to be filmed. And if I make a mistake, if I trip over, that will be, there'll be proof of that. And it's a, it is a scary thing, but it, it did gradually get a little bit more natural. She suspects that you creep down to our bed. Mm. I thought we'd put Anthony down the end. It's not that kind of relationship anyway, is it? If she does, that was an amazing performance. And Honor, your character's mother in the film is played by your real-life mother, 
Tilda Swinton, who's also here at the festival with a filming competition, Memoria, as the protagonist. And I wondered how it was to create that mother-daughter relationship in an artificial way on screen. Was it odd? And did you ever imagine that you'd be going to work one day with your mum? I, do you know what? It, it was so much fun. It wasn't awkward or difficult, and it was. We didn't need to find a rhythm. It was interesting. I mean, um, the relation, the relationship between Julie and Rosalind is very, very different to my own one with my mother. You know, we're very affectionate and very sort of open and very sort of touchy with each other, and and it was interesting having that distance. But it was it was really fun. I did, there was never a moment that it felt weirdly unnatural it was really fun yeah but it was also all the other the, there are so many uh relationships that julie has uh in in the film whether it's with her crew or mm. her friend marland so you, you were all the time having to negotiate as honor working with these different not only actors other non-actors and it's working with jagan who plays marland who's julie's best friend was one of the most true to life because we're so close in real life as well, and it's sort of, we would always say we just completely forgot the cameras were rolling when we were together. Because um, we really are ourselves, I feel. I like to think it was really, yeah, really easy. Patrick. Hi. Hi. How are you? I am middling. How are you? Yeah, middling as well. <laughs> Good. How's your film? I'm not calling it that any longer. I was invited to leave the edit. There's one character that I was particularly entertained by, that is the filmmaker Patrick, quite a temperamental filmmaker, not necessarily likeable, and I wonder if he was based on anyone you'd care to mention, Joanna? Uh, no, but he's sort of based on, on what I both hated and loved at that time, I, uh, and was envious of, in a way. Uh, uh, usually a male director, very confident, with a big vision, and uh, one can just imagine who those people might be in the 80s, and it's not based on just one person. There's a number of, it's a, uh, a coalescing of a number of directors. And the film evokes 1980s London wonderfully with the music and the clothes. There's this fantastic attention to detail. And there's that creative climate at the art school, that, uh, the film school Julie attends. Do you think, looking at the UK today, for young people of honours generation, for example, do you think that creative climate, that art school atmosphere, is still there, is still available in the same way? Well, it's very, very different now. For example, economically, um, I didn't have to pay to go to film school and not only didn't have to pay, but got a grant, and each student got 14,000 pounds to make a film, and you could, or a number of films, and you could use that 14,000 pounds in whatever way you wanted. You could make 14 different films, or you could make just one. Um, but you had to beg for that money. And the meeting that Julie has in part two uh, to, to uh, make her project, you, you, you were, I had the same situation and uh, they wouldn't give you the money unless they supported the project. So Julie mm -hmm. is up against those tutors in the way that I was. And I was told, if you go ahead with your project, we won't support you. But I did eventually get it made. But now, students, it's a very different story. They have to pay to go to university and it's, uh, it, yeah, it's very different. And also, we're at an international film festival here after a year of a sort of cultural hiatus. What are you most excited about in terms of the Cannes Film Festival and the general return to the arts? Being in a cinema. <laughs> yeah. I've only seen one movie. film here so far, yeah. but it was a pleasure to be uh, in, in a big auditorium with lots of people. What are you excited to see next? Oh, my lordy. Uh, Annette. I want to see Annette so bad. I want to see everything, really. And um, I'm just so sad that we sort of, like, I was just inside all day and I'm sort of around everybody. I'm like, oh! I want to like actually really really be here and see everybody else's work but hopefully fingers crossed another day but um yeah being in a cinema i really really miss that being i mean eating with people as well and not being sort of really separated from everybody and sort of looking over and seeing what everyone else is eating it's it's really nice it feels really personal and uh yeah it's been a time of real isolation I'm really happy joanna and honor thank you so much for your time today thank you so much. okay